What happens when a narcissist's manipulation tactics fail and their control over a loved one begins to slip away? They may resort to their last and most dangerous trick, and this is quite unbelievable. The smear campaign is a tactic that a narcissist uses to ruin their target's reputation by spreading false rumors and lies. They do this to create doubt and mistrust in the minds of their target's loved ones, making it difficult for them to find support and leave a toxic relationship. The narcissist may start by planting seeds of doubt in the minds of their target's closest friends and family members. They may make up stories about their target, painting them as unstable, unreliable, or even mentally ill. They may also exaggerate their target's flaws and mistakes, making them seem much worse than they actually are. Over time, these lies and rumors can take on a life of their own, spreading throughout the target's social circle and causing serious damage to their reputation. This can be incredibly isolating and traumatic for the target, who may feel as though they have no one to turn to. When compared to normal individuals, pathological narcissists always exhibit certain traits that are consistent between them. Given their vengeful nature, they have excellent reason to fear what would happen if their secret were to be exposed to the general public. Narcissists' actions are often a complete mystery to those around them. If you have had even a passing acquaintance with a narcissist or come from a narcissistic household, you can certainly imagine how a narcissist would respond if they felt they had lost control over you. In line with the narcissist's need for constant affirmation from others, they have no foundation on which to build a comprehension of the world because they do not know who they are. They resort to shaming, threatening, and bullying others into giving in to their demands in order to gain the attention and affirmation they need, which can be unrealistic. They suffer from crippling feelings of envy and shame. And the strangest part is that they often act rudely to cover them up. Cruel people, those who ignore, reject, punish, cheat, mock, and so on, often find themselves alone. Due to their toxic personalities, Many narcissists live in solitude. When they're no longer able to exert authority over someone, they have only a limited repertoire of responses. They may even take the initiative to try to make amends with you, but they may not consider the harm they have caused. They feel regret because of the existing predicament, especially the loss of a crucial supply source. It makes them feel dreadful to be abandoned, and they feel ashamed that their secret has been exposed. Another option is to provide an explanation before apologizing, such as, it's not me, it's my nervousness. The cause of my illness is not under my control, or my addiction to this drug has compromised my ability to regulate my actions. It may also be their fault that years ago, someone said something that really hurt them. This too may sound familiar to some of you. Most narcissists are unrepentant and resume unpleasant behavior within a day or a week after apologizing. Narcissists have a habit of reverting to their earlier behaviors, even high-functioning ones who can easily come up with new ways to execute old tactics. It's like a different presentation of the same harmful traits. Rather than apologizing, some narcissists may pretend to be reasonable by following the grey rock method and answering all questions with a single word or implementing a no-contact policy and not responding to inquiries. Another common approach is to express regret for past wrongdoings and promise eternal love via text or email that reads, I have no idea what I have done to hurt you, but I will always love you. However, you may also hear veiled threats such as, you can count on me to tell everyone the truth about you. Nonetheless, I want you to know how deeply I care for you. I won't try to dissuade you if you receive a message like this or if someone begs you to give them another chance with an apology or tears, but I will advise you to reflect on your history with this person before making any impulsive decisions. There is a limit to how many times you can hear someone say, I'm sorry. Although the apologies may not have added up to a large number, it's important to consider how many times they've occurred. Our tension may have eased after previous apologies. I don't believe that pattern will change, as narcissists typically don't change their behavior. Therefore, it's reasonable to expect a similar outcome if the same actions are taken. Secondly, narcissists almost never apologize when caught lying. They can't or will not confess to their harmful behaviors towards you or anyone else because they cannot or will not admit to their own shortcomings, misjudgments, blunders, 
or limitations. Most of the charges against you are completely baseless, with what you said or did being twisted or misrepresented to make you look bad. Narcissists will futilely attempt to mislead others about your genuine intentions and character by telling them fabricated stories. If you were in a long-term relationship with a narcissist, they may have been an expert manipulator and gaslighter. You may start to doubt your own sanity if it seems like more people have faith in the narcissist than in you. Covert narcissists are masters of running a covert black campaign, giving the impression of humility and contrition to those on the outside. Thirdly, they may start contacting others you know outside of the relationship to convey their true caring for them, if they haven't already. Having total control over their immediate surroundings is of paramount importance to a narcissist. Whether it's letting someone know you're worried about them, or just wanting to share your latest interest in something they might find interesting, it's always good to let people know you're still thinking about them. Once the narcissist has an instant connection with team members, they will start sending greeting cards, calling, and inviting them to get-togethers. Narcissists, despite how they may seem to others at first, are constantly attempting to establish their goodness and worthiness of respect. This has a multitude of benefits for the narcissist. The goal is to recruit the victim's close friends and family as flying monkeys to carry out surveillance and keep tabs on you. They help the narcissist monitor you and gather information about you. The main purpose is to scare the victim into submission or keep them under the abuser's control so that the abuser can keep harming the victim. This tactic allows the narcissist to manage their own and others' responses to challenging situations. Narcissism is harmful because it undermines its target psychologically first and then, if that fails, attempts to harm them physically. This is the fourth most important thing on the list. As things become bad, narcissists turn to projection techniques on their victims. Narcissists frequently use emotional blackmail to force their victims to take responsibility for the narcissist's negative actions. If a narcissist experiences the loss of a loved one or close friend, they may try to use their grief for attention. This is rather daring, if you ask me. They will resort to any methods, including lying and manipulating others, to garner the pity of others in order to further their own interests. They will not stop begging, crying, whining, getting angry, etc., until the victim apologizes. When describing a scenario like this, I often say they've at the bed and blamed the blanket. Fifth, they become bitter and petty with each other. It always looks like the problem lies within you. To this, the narcissist will respond, you have no business trying to guess my thoughts. There's nothing you can do about the fact that you've decided you can't stand any more of what I do. Remember that narcissists blame their victims for everything that happens to them. Sadly, some people just can't help but act in damaging or aggressive ways. They might tell people unflattering things about you. If it serves their purposes, they may withhold data, assets, and information. They won't think twice about doing whatever they believe is necessary to regain control over their prey. Instructing their victims to lead by example is a common phrase used to justify this kind of behavior. This brings us to the last point. If the narcissist is unable to maintain their lies, power, or fear, they may try to form a trauma bond. Narcissists have a tendency to normalize their abusive behavior, which can deceive their victims into accepting it. Victims of emotional abuse may give the impression of being completely dependent on the abuser's approval, whether it be financial or emotional. For instance, if a couple decides to raise their children together, they are more likely to spend a lot of time with each other, regardless of how unhealthy the relationship may be. Perhaps they have developed an unhealthy level of dependency on their abuser and will never be able to leave. It's also possible that there's a physical explanation, such as an underlying health problem. If you and the narcissist don't already share a trauma bond, the narcissist will try to manufacture one by bringing up traumatic situations you've both experienced. If they succeed, they will do everything they can to fortify it so that you can't break free or take action on your own. It's important to recognize that this is a common tactic used by narcissists and that it says more about them than it does about you. Remember that you aren't alone and that there are people who will believe in and support you. Try to limit your contact with a narcissist as much as possible. 
This can be difficult if you're in a close relationship with them, but try to create boundaries and stick to them. Avoid sharing personal information with them and don't engage in arguments or debates that could give them ammunition for their smear campaign. All in all, when a narcissist feels that they are losing influence over another person, they may exhibit these behaviors and attitudes. Clearly, there's more to it than that. Leave a comment below if you'd like to contribute to the discussion of this problem. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon if you enjoy this video and don't want to miss any of my future uploads. I appreciate it a lot. So let's summarize today's video guys. I believe that every person deserves to be respected and valued. But what happens when a narcissist tries to control someone? When they fail, they resort to their last and most dangerous trick, the smear campaign. This is a tactic used by a narcissist to ruin someone's reputation by spreading false rumors and lies creating doubt and mistrust. As a result, it becomes difficult for the fit team to find support and leave the toxic relationship. Narcissists have a need for constant affirmation from others and this is because they don't know who they are. They suffer from crippling feelings of envy and shame and often act rudely to cover them up. They can be cruel and find themselves alone due to their toxic personalities. When they lose control, they have a limited repertoire of responses which can include making amends, expressing regret, or pretending to be reasonable. However, most narcissists are unrepentant and resume unpleasant behavior after apologizing. It's crucial to reflect on your history with the person before making impulsive decisions, no matter how much they apologize or cry. Narcissists almost never apologize when caught lying because they can't or will not admit to their own shortcomings. If it seems like more people have faith in the narcissist than in you, it's essential to remember that they may be an expert manipulator and gaslighter. Lastly, they may start contacting others you know outside of your social circle, making it challenging for you to form new relationships. In conclusion, if you find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist, remember to reflect on your history with them and not make impulsive decisions. Don't forget to reach out to a support group or a professional to help you through the typical time. Remember that you are deserving of respect and love and it's essential to value yourself. Please share your thoughts and experiences about this topic in the comment section below if you have anything to add. Your presence here is greatly appreciated and thank you for watching this video.